You got here just in time And changed my lonely life That lovely day And changed my life That lovely day Just in Please, round the room. Earlier tonight, two Pakistani gentlemen came to the club and asked if we had a colour bar. I told them we hadn't, and they'd have to use the same one as the white people. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. A lovely show we tonight. Brian Clough was supposed to be on tonight. He does an act with a lion. He opens his mouth and the lion puts his head in it. <laughs> Would you put your hands together? A nice big greeting from uh, for a group from across the water in America, here in England, doing a lovely tour, the Flirtations. <laughs> That we we gonna sing glory, hallelujah, right here, right now. Come on. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. 
Is, is that the football pools? Could I speak to Mr Littlewood, please? <laughs> eh? There's no such person. There must be. I've been writing to him for ten years. <laughs> None of the letters have ever come back. Oh, I see. Well, well, can you help me then? This is the concert chairman of the Wheel Tappers and Shunters Social Club. Affiliated. <laughs> yeah, yes, we have a syndicate. Uh, on, your, on your football pools, yes. Uh, last week we had eight draws uh, and we haven't had the £500,000. <laughs> I was ringing up in case it's got lost in the post. <laughs> eh? No, no, I haven't got the reference number of the coupon. You'll find ours, though. It's the one with the cross where it says no publicity. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, well, we did a permutation. Yes, any eight from 52. <laughs> eh? Eight from 52. 44 P staked. <laughs> yes, one P a line. 52 take away 8, that's 44, isn't it? 8 from 52. Oh, is that not the way you do it? <laughs> oh, I see, I'm sorry to bother you. Yes, we're not lost, Bernard. You don't have to sell your Rolls Royce. He says he'll send our 44p back to us. Come in handy, that. With that 44 people, we'll book one of them acts off new faces. <laughs> yeah. It's better than ventriloquist, but everybody's going mad for him. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, on with the show. And this next double act, uh, really fantastic. A, 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 a lad from Scotland, a Scottish comedian, just to get our own back for Andy Stewart. Uh, they've just come back from the, a tour of South Africa, where even the licorice all sorts are in separate bags over there, you know. <laughs> He's just come back. He's just come back from a, a tour of South Africa, and you've got to guess which one of these, this double act, insulted the witch doctor. <laughs> we'll leave it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome return to the Crankies. Come on, Sam. OK. Thank you, good evening. Nice to be back here in England. Of course, there's only one difference between England and Scotland. Oil. <laughs> That's not <laughs> nice, is it? There's only one difference between an Englishman and a Scotsman, and that is when an Englishman goes bald, he buys a wig. Yeah, and when a Scotsman goes bald, he sells his comb. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? You told that joke the last time you were here, mister. It's rotten. Hey, how come this little boy's back in here tonight? Yeah. Well, we made him on remember. He's, uh, he's, he comes in here regular now. Come on, all right. I'm in an ordinary no, member. We'll give you a lift with his act late. Will you act late? I can't give a kid an ordinary member. Can oh, you? Oh, listen. Hey? We had to make him an ordinary member. It was the only way we could stop it off him letting the tyres down on the car park. True. <laughs> Leave him alone. Hey. Well, if you don't mind, I, keep out of my act. I okay. come. I come here even to see the strippers, Mister. Well, you're not coming in. I'm not stripping tonight, so sit there. Keep quiet. Can I come up beside you? No, you can. You? Oh, yes, Mister. Sure, I can go beside them. No, I'm sure the ladies will get quiet. No, they don't. You don't yes, want the little boy on the stage, do you? Yeah, he's not a bad lad. Oh, that's it. A room again. I'm sorry, Sonny. I'll give you a sweetie, Mister. You look there. Yeah, yeah. There we are. Nice, good artist. What's that? Hey. Look, you can you can have a sweetie. What's nice. Sonny, I don't want to eat sweeties up here. I come on here to entertain the ladies and gentlemen. Oh, they're very nice. I'm quite. Uh, they don't look very nice. What are they? Jelly babies. <laughs> Jelly babies. I don't uh, like jelly babies. They're, they're old boys. <laughs> but old boys asked the lady in the shop and she gave me old boys. It's a stupid. There's uh, not that much difference. No, but there's that much more jelly. Look. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't. Listen, here. This is a bit much, really. Oi, hey. Sunny. Hey. Stop. I'm very sorry, man. Hey, you shouldn't be in here in the first place. Hey. Care, Little boy of yours, I should be in bed ready for school tomorrow. What a eh? place to bring a kid up in a club. School? School. Well, I don't like the school. What's wrong with the school? Well... Eh? <laughs> I don't like the teacher. Doesn't like his teacher? Well, she gives me the strap. What? The cane. The cane? I got it today. You got the cane at school today? Get it every day. What for? The, the little boy that sits next to me was smoking. Oh. What did you get the cane for? There's meat set him on fire. 
That's no way to learn at school at here. What do you expect to learn? <laughs> Doing things like that? Yeah. What's your favourite subject? Nothing. <laughs> what? I don't like nothing. What about history? Don't like it. Mm. Geography? Don't like it. Mm. General knowledge. Do you know anything about general knowledge? Yes, he was a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there, He's sitting there, I can see him, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a question on general knowledge. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. What do you know about Rudyard Kipling? Ooh, he makes exceedingly good cakes. <laughs> That's not the one I made. <laughs> Thick, you see, you've got no chat. That's what happens when you're sitting in a club instead of being in a house. Yeah, yeah. Here, do you know anything about the Bible? Yes, no, I go to Sunday school. Well, that's nice. Little yeah. boy goes to Sunday school. I'm a good little boy. You like Sunday school? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Here's a question on the Bible. <laughs> what do you know about Damascus? It kills all known household germs. <laughs> Is it a thick? <laughs> you're thick, you. I'm good. Listen, who knocked down the walls of Jericho? I don't know, but it wasn't me, honestly, Miss. <laughs> Could you not think? I think it was wimpy. <laughs> You're having a twist, I'll tell you. Wasting your time. Listen, you. Gonna... I'll ask you one. Ooh. Can I? Can I? Yeah. <laughs> Can I? What was it again? Yeah. Who was the first man ever to drive a motor car? That's easy. It was Henry Ford. Hey? Henry Ford. Who's he? <laughs> He made the motor car. Don't be daft. It was before him. How could it be? I was reading my wee Bible. Yes. And it was Moses. <laughs> you read that in the Bible? Moses. Tell the ladies and gentlemen, tell me, where does it say that in the Bible? It says, Moses came down the mountain in his triumph. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it meant. What it meant, stupid. Listen, I think you better go actually. Right. But I'm going to sing a little song now. Oh, can yes. I, can I help you? No, I don't want any help, Sonny. Oh. Just get off. Please. Oh, let him help you. Get What's off. the matter with him? Oh. He's no got... trouble. He's not... If he said he didn't knock the walls of Jerry Gold down, he didn't knock them down. Oh, he's yes, I can see what we're working with. Get off. There. Hey! We've got a cage for you afterwards. This is a song about an old Australian stockman who's lying and he's dying. And he gets up onto his elbow, turns to his mates who are gathered all around. And he says that. Watch me wallaby feed them, mates. Watch me wallaby feed them. They were dangerous breeds, mates. Watch me wallaby feed all together now. Toy me kangaroo down. Smokes. Toy me kangaroo down. Oh, yeah. Toy me kangaroo down. Smokes. Toy me kangaroo down. Play me didgeridoo. Blue. Play me didgeridoo. Keep playing to the poo fruit. Blue. Play me didgeridoo. All together now, toy me kangaroo deal. Smokes, toy me kangaroo. Oi, oi, toy me kangaroo deal. Smokes, toy me kangaroo deal. Tell me hide when I'm a dead friend. Tell me hide when I'm dead. So he turned his eye when he died, Clyde. And that said, hanging on the. All together now, toy me kangaroo deal. Smokes, toy me kangaroo deal. Toy me kangaroo deal. Toy me kangaroo down. Regarding next Tuesday's talent competition. We had hoped to get someone to judge it who had experience of this kind of thing. But we couldn't get anybody and we've had to settle for you, e. Green. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on stage we have now the John Chilton's Feet Warmers. <laughs> and if we can persuade our friend over here, who's having a night out at the Wheel Tappers, it's nice to see him here, George Melly. Will you give us a couple of songs, George? Get up there with a the light. George Melly, ladies and gentlemen. Now, um, I'm going to sing a number with the John Chilton Feet Warmers featuring the very fine piano playing of Colin Bates. It's a boogie-woogie number. 
And it's off our recent LP, It's George, which you can get in your local hardware shop, pet shop, and even if you're lucky in a record shop. And it's called The Boogie Woogie Man. Here it is. Now, this is one of the finest acts we've ever had here. The, one of the best spe speciality acts we've ever seen at the, the Wheel Tappers and Shunters. Believe you me, eyes front, and we leave you in the company of Richard and Lara Germain.
Thank you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you. You know, magic is probably one of the oldest forms of entertainment in the world. It stems, in fact, right back to early Egyptian times, even. And, of course, over the years, as you know, many, many illusions have become very well known. But, you know, if any of us here this evening were asked what we thought was the most famous one, we'd probably all say sawing a woman in half. But, you know, let's be honest, nowadays, nobody really believes it unless you actually pull the two halves apart. And even then, well, maybe the lady's a contortionist or were accused of using two assistants or sometimes even a pair of false feet. But, you know, it is perfectly possible to separate the parts of people's bodies. And we've brought along a little apparatus this evening that's designed to do just that. Now, it has, in fact, three parts to it. A top section, a middle section, and a bottom section. Now, on the front is a diagram which shows where our victim's going to stand all the time. And these two blades divide the box off into the three separate sections. Now, you know, whenever you see these on television, people always say, oh, well, you know, of course, they move the camera out of the way at just the right moment, or it's all done by some sort of trick photography. But, in fact, it's just what it appears to be. And just to prove it, to prove that I'm not going to cheat, I'm going to invite, hmm, I think, uh, uh, think a gentleman just to step up onto the stage and just have a quick look at it on your behalf. This is the bit where everybody wonders what the hell they sat at the front for. What about, what about where we go? What about one of these gentlemen over here, very ex distinguished looking gentleman over here? Would you like to give him a nice round of applause for yeah. him, Johnny? No idea what he's coming up for. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you for volunteering. Uh, what's your name? Brian, nice to see you. Brian, Brian, would you like to just have a look inside the box, cast your experienced eye, make sure we've nobody hiding inside there. There are no mirrors, no trap doors. It's exactly what it appears to be. OK, Brian, he's thorough. I'll give him that. Brian, I wonder if you'd like to just stand on the far side over there for me for a moment. Yeah, that's it. Don't damage the equipment. <laughs> and at this point, I'm going to ask Lara to step inside the box. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to close up this bottom door. And Lara, would you please push your left foot through this hole that we have in the bottom here? Now, Brian, hmm, would you like to just come and feel Lara's foot a little bit for me? <laughs> we're quite sure that it's a real foot. It's not a false foot that she pushes through from the other side, all right? Well, now let's close up this middle door. And Lara, would you put your right hand through there? Oh, no, he's getting eager now. Look at that. <laughs> and, and just push your tummy up to this little hole. We've got his eyes are sparkling. Look at this. Now, to just tickle her tummy a little bit. Oh, he does that ever so well. Look at that. Well, now let's close up this top door. And Lara, would you put your left hand through there and your face up to the hole? Now, that's it, Brian. Feel both the hands. A left hand at the top, a right hand in the middle. Feel her face. He's playing a one man band up here. <laughs> Feel her face, Brian. Yeah, come on, hello. Go on, they got it. Tell his wife something, who can't you? Make sure, make sure that it's all real before we start. Now, Brian, if I could just ask you just to stand on the far side just for a moment, then everybody can see. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to move this middle section across, but you'll notice at the moment I can't move it very far because Lyra's hand is in the way here. Brian, have you got a handkerchief in your pocket we can borrow? He's thinking about it. Oh, yeah, it's, a, oh, it's today's as well. Look at that. <laughs> Brian, Brian, yo, it's not so bad. Brian, would you like to just put it in Lara's hand for me there? That's fine. And Brian, you're doing very well. So would you like to come and stand on this side where I'm over here for a moment? That's lovely. Now, at this point, we come to the part with the two blades. Now, Brian, would you have a look at this for me? Make sure it's just what it appears to be. It's absolutely solid. It's not the collapsible source. OK? And we're going to take the first blade and push this one through the bottom section to chop off Lara's legs. Whoa. There we are, that's one. Well, now we take the second blade. They look a very untrusting lot down the front here. But have a look at this one too, Brian. You know, I don't want to be accused of using one real one and one false one, OK? And we're going to push this one through the upper section to chop off Lara's head and shoulders. What a waste. There we are, that's two. Now, ladies and gentlemen, obviously you can't see around the back, so, Brian, would you like to just come round the back for me and just give the blades a little bit of a push backwards and forwards, then everybody... Uh, don't go mad with it. Everybody knows that they've gone... She likes that bit. Everybody knows that they've gone right through. Now, Brian, would you like to just come round the front for me and just put your right hand on the end of this middle section just there? Because what we're going to do is I'm going to count now one, two, three, push. 
And when I shall push, Brian, you're not so worried about it. When I shall push, you push, and I'll pull. Now let's see what happens. One, two, you ready, Brian? Three, push! On behalf of the committee, that's bloody impossible. Yeah. Well, you should worry, you're next. <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I better have your handkerchief back, Brian. Brian, would you like to just go around the back for me and just shake hands with me through this hole where her tummy should be? Then everybody knows that we use no mirrors. There's nothing unusual about it at all. Now, Brian, just before we finish, come around the front again, because he obviously enjoys this bit. You know, feel both her hands again, her left hand at the top, her right hand over here. Feel her foot, Brian. I don't know what they do in the army. Feel her foot, Brian. We still have her face. Oh, yeah, Brian. Come on, give her tummy a little bit of a last tickle. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, come on, give him some applause. He's worked very, very hard up here. Brian, thanks for your help. Nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Give him a nice send off. Well, now, while you're trying to study it all out, let's see whether we can put Lara out of her misery and put this jigsaw puzzle back together again. Right, such a good song that it stands the test of time. As you know, we all call it a standard. Well, likewise, certain illusions also stand the test of time. And we'd like to finish this evening with our standard, this very, very heavy and very solid steel trunk that you can see up here. Now, it's quite an ordinary trunk. It has a handle at each end and it locks by these two padlocks that you can see at the front here. But once again, obviously, I'm not expected to take my word for it. So I need the help this time of two gentlemen who would like to just step up and have a quick look at it on your behalf. What about this gentleman who's drinking his pint very hard? Would you like to give me a hand just for a moment? Give him a nice round of applause. A gentleman over there too. Would you like to just help me? That's lovely. Give him a nice hand, ladies and gentlemen. It might have been you. Nice to see you, gentlemen. Thank you for volunteering. I wonder if you'd like to just stand at either end of the trunk for me. Now, I say it's made of steel, so obviously it's very, very heavy. Would you like to just take hold of the handle you'll find and just lift it off the floor and feel the weight? Good. While you have it, would you like to bring it down the step for me? <laughs> That's lovely. Now, if you have a look at the outside of the trunk, you'll see, in fact, that it's constructed out of steel. Please have a good look at it. Look at the lid, look at the sides, look at the back, look at the front. It's a perfectly ordinary one, I promise you. I was very sure I wouldn't risk asking these two to look at it. Now, if you'd like to look inside the trunk, you'll see that the inside, in fact, is lined out with felt. Now, once again, don't be afraid of it. Bang the sides, make sure we haven't cut a hole out in the bottom. It's just what it is, a perfectly ordinary trunk. Now, in the bottom, you'll find a very large bag. I wonder if you'd like to just lift this out down the front here for me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, in fact, a GPO mail bag, which they very kindly lent us for this evening. Please have a good look at it, because it has no zips, no poppers on the bottom, no fasteners. It's just what it is, a perfectly ordinary bag. While you have it like that, I wonder if you'd like to just hold the top open for me, but just to bring your hands down to about a foot off the floor so that Lara can step inside without injuring her reputation. Now, just bounce her up and down a little bit. That's lovely. Yeah, don't get carried away about it, you know. Can we just pull these two ropes tight here? Now, would you like to tie that anyhow you like? You know, something simple and something fast, either a knot or a bow, anything you want, just so long as you're sure that it's secure. Now, I hope you're feeling strong, because <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to ask you to lift, Lara, into the trunk for me. If you'd like to take her feet, sir, would you? And you'd like to take her under the arms. Yeah, under the arms. <laughs> Just lift her in, nice and steady. That's fine. Have room for one in there. Sorry about that. Now, if we could just shut the lid down, you'll see it fastens, in fact, by the two padlocks at the front. Would you like to just lock it up for me? The padlocks are spring-loaded. They don't need a key. Just snap them too, but make sure that they're fastened. Now, I'm already passing one rope lengthways across the trunk, but, gentlemen, you'll see, in fact, there are two ropes which run across the trunk from the front to the back. One down the front there, sir. Would you like to just do as I'm doing, pass the loose end once through the loop, 
and just knot it as quickly and as tightly as you wish. Just fasten it up just however you want. Now this is a very large curtain which is attached to a hoop by these four ties that you can see. Gentlemen, could we just lie this on the top of the trunk? And if we could just give the ties a short, sharp pull, they've only got to press that on one by your left hand at the front there, sir, one at the back here, one over here. We can drape the curtain round so that it hangs down to the floor and covers the trunk and just leave the ring as it is on the top. Now, thanks for helping me out. He's looking very, very sceptical up here. Well, just before you sit down, have a good look at it again. You know, make sure that the padlocks are fastened, the ropes are tight, and that there's no means whatsoever that Lara can get out without a key, of course. OK? Ladies and gentlemen, give them a nice send-off, will you? Come on, because they work very so hard up here. Gentlemen, thanks for your help. Thank you. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, that just about winds us up for this evening. Thanks for being a super audience. Just before we finish, as you can see, in fact, it takes quite a long time to fasten Lara up in the sack, lift the sack into the trunk, padlock it up, rope it up so that everything's secure. Now, normally, as you realise, it would take just as long to get her out again, but we'd like to finish this evening by showing you how it can be done just that little bit faster. Notice that we've got a new waitress tonight. It's her first night here, and we want her to be very welcome. She has assured your committee that she will endeavour to satisfy everybody before 20 past 10. <laughs> Will you please give a big round of applause, Trisha? Trisha! <laughs> Trisha, Trisha, all fall down. What have you done there, love? I hope you all saw Trisha, cos I don't think she'll be here next week. <laughs> a gentleman we've all come to love over the, over the years because he's played some really wonderful stuff and gives us some, a lot of happiness because he plays some nice sing-along songs. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Joe Henderson! <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, before our next uh, music, I'd like you to clear your throats a little bit, would you please? Everybody have a good old splutter. Go on. And now I want you to repeat after me. Listen very carefully. Here we go. Hey, Barbara, Bob. Hey. Excuse me, Dickie. <laughs> I prefer you telling jokes. <laughs> All right, you carry on, Joe. You're doing a very good job, Joe. We'll cut into that now, you see. You're doing a very good job. Hey, Bob, Reba. Hey, Bob, Reba. Hey, Bob, Reba. Everybody now. A one, two, three, four, oh. Clap your hands. 